<laughs> so um, I'd like to introduce my greatest friend who all my friends are jealous about, um, Inessa de La Roche. We have a common love of vampires and we have a common love not of blood because I can't tell you that I like blood. We have a common love of taking the most from life and enjoying it. Explain where you come from. I came from kind of witchery line. My great-grandmother, my grandmother and great-great-grandmother, they all were, you know, witches. It's a very pagan thing. It's a very, it's like women who had power and never were questioned you know, by their power. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were healers, they were the wise women. They, you know, they knew how to handle everybody and help everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for instance, I was talking to Barrington the other day and I said, you know, we had, uh, you know, women president was not an issue. All the best pos positions, you know, in jobs or like really great, like lawyers, doctors were always women. Absolutely. And it was right to do. Men were like just, okay, we like that. We allow you to be there because you're the best. Inessa, I adore you you as you know and i think that you're an incredible portrait photographer which is an extraordinarily difficult thing i know you're many things but let's talk about portraiture for just a second because you manage to capture great beauty at the same as personality in a picture you see i love people i really do i love characters and i i always when i meet people i always study them you know i listen to them i see them how the body language works and it's I see so much beauty in them so I always want to capture them especially when they kind of natural and don't notice themselves you know in the details when they're tired perhaps or when they're excited it's kind of it's nice to capture emotion yes. and I think it's really that's the beauty for me in photography when you suddenly just you know like a child you almost play and you're not aware of it, anybody around you and so I love that kind of a bit of a magic moment in each person. You also do still photography for films, which yes. is a completely different thing. And the only people that I know that do that, that job are actually men. So you're joining a whole lot of men doing um, still photography for film. For women doing this job, it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, I guess, stepping out of the comfort zone because you have to find yourself in this environment surrounded by so many men and you and yet you know you turn up and there's some some of them looking at you and thinking you just uh, you know pretty face but actually I'm here because I'm talented I'm here I can be as good as all of you are together <laughs> exactly but you have great beauty so you must go in there and be my God, is she an actress? Is she a model? Is she a stylist? Is she, um, is she a photographer? And she can't be a photographer. I really was privileged to work with very great filmmakers like Ridley Scott, you know, Barry Levinson, who are absolutely uh, masters in what they do. It's a good learning process on every film, with every director, with every actor, with every cinematographer and it inspires me and I'm growing. You are a part of it and you get, you know, it's not glamorous. You get dirty, you get dusty, you get cold and hungry. I couldn't do your job, you know, because, well, lots of reasons. So explain dealing with the directors, what it's like. Well, actually, on, in some ways, being a woman, you can get away a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, you know, those photographers who are competing with me always. Actually, you know, they should remember that I can get away with things and, you know, I can... Because it's also a very, very important thing, is communication. Uh, it's not to be liked. Lots of photographers actually try to please everybody else. They try to, you know, brown-nosing actors and, you know, directors. But actually they don't like that because they feel nervous. Of course. But if you treat them just like you treat every other human being, like you're just natural with them, they let you do anything you like because they feel the, mm. you know, equality. At the same time, your work is exceptional and um, it's a man's game, but perhaps, you know, it's good also to have a woman there, you know, for the more sensitive moments. I think it's about time women step in into men's game. As a woman, that's how I see the world. I see the film sets. I can take pictures from intuition rather than being just 
technical. Absolutely. And technical is not a big deal. Everybody knows how to use cameras. Everybody mm -hmm. can be technical, but actually you have to really be aware and quick and see how, you know, how you're going to take pictures is, will be your point of view. So it's, it's good for women to be able to be a creator. Uh, of course. So you share your life with a man that you're deeply in love with and he's 30 years older than you or whatever he is, 40, 40, yeah. Yeah, 40 years old. And this is unusual in itself. I mean, you have a lot, you're, it's a controversial thing, isn't it? I feel I'm ageless, so it's Barrington. And I think it's just the, al the alchemy that connects us. It's a much bigger, it's beyond the age. I like men with experience. I like men who is mature intellectually. I like to talk yeah. about, you know, we can talk about anything, anytime. Yes. You know, I don't like limitations with people. I like to be free. And I think, you know, Barrington is giving so much to me and I giving back to him. But we sharing, you know, it's a, it becomes our own philosophy of life. Yeah. Would you like children of your own? I mean, you're not conventional in any sense of the word. I mean, you know, there's no sort of breastfeeding going on in your kitchen. I mean, you know, you're a very independent creature. Explain that. Yes, well, I don't really want children. Um, perhaps I am selfish, but I think um, I just love, I live the moment. And I love the way it is right now. I love the way we travel, create. Our art is a baby and it takes so much energy and care and responsibility. So I'm, in, I'm totally fulfilled. I'm a mother of my art. Where do you think um, you will go in the future? Do you think you will carry on um, working together in doing um, sort of movable feasts? I started to, you know, direct with him or co-direct with him. Uh, also assist him in some ways and with ideas, with writing, you know, I always will be that person who actually will be behind or pushing, you know, pushing buttons. He's visionary, he's all over the place, he's big, he sees things too big and I'm earth and I kind of try to sometimes, you know, put it down to say, look, you know, to manifest things, yes. you need to reduce that vision. <laughs> he's the master, so he, you know, he's not going to be sitting around, you know, seducing. Yeah, it. he's the master of, you know, of his, of his visions. You're, I suppose, the muse of um, Barrington, as well as an equal partner. Uh, I love what Barrington does and what he actually allows me to do and participate. I love his work. So tell me, how did you find um, his sort of, um, his bordello of sex slaves? Were you inclusive in this or did you actually? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, it's, it's funny that he's very excited me with, when we met, he, he gave me his card. He was in plastic dress and yellow wig. He was all kind of like the sexy girl on a card and, I thought, and with whips. And I thought, wow. Look at this man, I want to know more about him because I was so, you know, I'm 21. <laughs> For God's sake, I don't know much about it. And it just so excited me. And of course, when we met later, we, uh, we went outside Berlin in a castle. We just locked ourselves and we were making like six movies, <laughs> like for two or three weeks we were there. So you started off with sex movies, which is amazing. I know you taught me a lot of things <laughs> because it was, <laughs> because it was so but I, You know, I, I think that's the best way to learn in any case because why not? I mean, I never had that opportunity, but had I had it, I would have grabbed it. You would love it. <laughs> I'm sure I would. <laughs> so tell me about the sex movies anyway. So what, how many did you make? Well, with them? We, actually we made quite a few because we were stuck there for three weeks in a cold. Minus 13 outside, snow. And it's so freezing inside the castle and we think it well, you know, we just have to make something hot. <laughs> so that kept us hot. But sex was it was a uh, lot of play. It's it was like a theatrical play. I'm sure. But it also was so exciting and it's so much beauty in it. 
that you know your Jew is just running. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very good to do it. It was very good to do it, and he's a good teacher actually in that. You have a great flair for sort of Victorian fashion. You know, I can imagine you in the Victorian era. Oh, I love it. You love, I love it. it so much. I kind of, I still, you know, I I like wearing, you know, Victorian kind of tops and maybe dresses or skirts, but in a bit punk way. <laughs> so where <laughs> do you find them? Because you're very clever on the internet, aren't you? I mean, yeah, you don't I have a particular shop, designer. Uh, well, I do, you know, like I do love, I do love Chanel, I love Prada, I love Gucci, I love all this, you know, yes. and I shop online and I sometimes just go and buy uh, vintage clothes, which I found this one woman, she collects vintage Japanese clothes. And it really suits me, except, you know, Japanese quite short to people, I'm very tall, so their sleeves sometimes <laughs> are too short, but I don't mind that, kind of adds, adds to my own character. You're very into social media as well. Well, I love social media, to be honest, you know, there are two sides of it, there is a very destructive side and there's a very productive side, you know, people can connect from all over the world without leaving their house, which is fantastic. Yes. And also the destructive side of it is so much online, it's everything. It's like, you know, from how to become a conscious person to how to, for example, make an atomic bomb. All information is online because we are energy and information ourselves. Yes. So everything is available. So I think, you know, it's good for people to watch each other, to, you know, to be exposed in some ways is good because you're learning from each other. Absolutely. And I love it. I love that you, okay, I have a filters, you know, how much I can take it or how much I want to be a part of it. I don't have to live that world or that, you know, virtual reality, but I can, you know, step in and step out. What I need, I get it from it and I just, you know, use it in my life and, you know, in physical world and then put it something away, give it away. Absolutely. Absolutely.